I had a very interesting question this morning on my Simple Wireless Electricity System original video from 2012. And Lation Fly asked if simply adding a 38 MHz crystal would produce a 38 MHz signal. I thought, well that actually ties into this Dr. Stifler work. Uh, the idea being, the 27 MHz crystal oscillator that uh, I built yesterday, that Lidmotor originally showed, I could take the output to a SWES, this is one of them, um, here it is, uh, I think it's 15 turns, by filler underneath just got a diode and an MPSA18. If I connect to the base of the transistor, can I get that to run in the megahertz? I think it'll just go over the top of the actual signal, it not being fast enough uh, with the switching between the coils, I don't know. Anyway, here's the original output here of the 27 megahertz crystal and in the bottom left you can see it's actually more like 9 megahertz and I've got no idea why but that's the wave shape it's producing so what I'm going to do now is to connect that yellow wire to the base and see what happens and first of all just to show this is now with the AAA inside is a coil 72 turns with just an LED on the top and you can see the wireless output so it's just a regular sweat and um, now what I'll do is to connect that wire to the base of the transistor. Right, the battery isn't in at the moment. What I've got is the scope probes attached to the emitter of the transistor and also its collector. Uh, and interestingly enough, it does show on the scope the 9 MHz and we've got a decent wave there. However, if I go for the uh, wireless output, there's nothing there. What I'll do next is to put the battery in and see what happens. Okay, the battery is now in and let's see if we've got wireless output. Yes we have, so that's fine. But what have we got on the scope? Well there we are. What seems to be happening is we have tiny little ripple things and then the large spike and if I draw all that together you can see there's the familiar Swaz kind of an output with each firing giving the high spike. So what I'm going to do is, to clarify all this, is to use the sniffer coil instead. I'm going to remove the probes, um, the scope probes from the circuit and use that instead. So, if I use a sniffer coil instead, connected to the scope, here's the output, same frequency, but what you can see are tiny little ripples there between each pulse. Now if I disconnect from here, we have the same trace but now without the ripples. So what I believe is going on, if I just connect it again I can explain it better, is these individual little ripples here are actually the 9 MHz as it seems to be coming out of the crystal. Trying to get in on the action as it were to try and switch the transistor. But the transistor isn't switching quickly enough because this feedback is coming from the bifiller coil. So in fact that whole idea doesn't work, but it is a very interesting little exercise to put a frequency on top of another frequency. I mean the other point to that is it, it doesn't seem to doesn't seem to affect the running. Um, but now we would appear to have a 9 MHz signal on top of a 400 kHz signal. Anyway, thanks for that idea, Lation Fly. That was a very interesting exercise. And thanks all for watching.